In the last couple of lessons, I showed how to create a game map using a dictionary. Each element of the dictionary is a key value pair, the key is the name of a room, the value is the room itself. But maybe I want my map in the game to have some extra capabilities, say to return the descriptions of all the rooms in the map. Well, to do that, I'd need to create my own special type of dictionary. And then I could add on extra methods that I need. To do that, I need to subclass the dictionary class. I'm Hugh, and this is another lesson in my complete guide to adventure game programming. This is my room list class in C Sharp. As you can see, it subclasses the dictionary class, and it sets the types of each key value pair to be RM as the key and a room object as the value. You may recall from the last lesson that RM is an enum which contains identifiers for the rooms in my game. I've created two methods for my room list class. The first one is just an interface to this simple dictionary indexer that returns a room at a given index. As I mentioned before, there are better ways of doing that, but for now this is good enough. Then I have this method, which returns a string showing all the room descriptions. That is, it goes through the dictionary in this for each loop, and it calls the describe method of each value, that is, of each room object. Now, that's not something I'd want to do while playing the game, but it's very handy for debugging. This, incidentally, is something I pretty much always do when I'm developing a big program. I give myself one or more tests or debug commands to make it easy for me to view data or to try things out while I'm developing the code. Let me show you a quick example of how I can use this debug command. I've entered debug as an available string. That's one of the uh, list of commands that can be entered at the prompt when running the game. If it matches the string, then this case statement executes and it calls this debug method. So let's have a look what's in that. So you can see that just writes to the console uh, map or the map uh, dictionary describe method. Let's have a look at that. And that simply goes through the key value pairs and on the value that's the room of each object in the map, it calls describe. Let's have a look at that. And that simply describes the room, puts the name and says the description of the room. Let's show this in action. So here I am, I can enter the normal uh, you know, the normal commands to interact with the game, but I can also enter debug for testing. And debug for testing lets me go through all the rooms and I can verify the names and the descriptions of all the rooms in my map. Notice that I've had to rewrite the move player method. Previously, that got rooms from an array using an index. Now that the map is a dictionary, it finds rooms using the key. That's one of these RM enumerated constants. And really, well, that's about it. Let me emphasize again that this is just one possible way of creating a map. You could use a standard dictionary class in C Sharp or a hash map in Java. You certainly don't have to create a subclass as I've shown here, or you could stick with a linear list or array if you prefer doing that. In fact, you can even link room objects directly from one to another without putting them into an array or dictionary at all. I explain how to do that in my Java book on adventure game programming. But you can see a, a simple example here. In this version, the exits of each room are not numbers or strings or constants. They are other room objects. Now, having room objects linked directly to other room objects like that, well, it may sound like a great idea, but it has a downside. Let's suppose there's a puzzle in which the player puts a magic ring into a slot in the first room. Let's say that's room one, and that causes a door to open in some other room elsewhere on the map. Well, let's assume that's room 100. If I don't have an array, an array list, or a dictionary of rooms, how do I even find room 100 to open its door? Remember, room 100 can only be found by traversing the links from one room object to another. There is no other reference to that object anywhere in the entire code of my game. So I'd have to traverse all those links one by one, like navigating a maze, just to find room 100. My solution to that problem in this version of my program, in which exits refer directly to room objects, is to create a linear map as well. That's this array list. Maybe you think that seems a bit odd. 
But in my experience, while it sounds like a really neat idea to have rooms that link directly to other rooms at their exits, in practice, you really do need some sort of single list of rooms as well, so that in your code you can access a room object immediately using its index into an array or its key into a dictionary. The same goes for other game objects such as treasures, which I'll talk about in a, a later lesson in this course. If you're a reasonably advanced programmer, by all means try creating rooms with direct links to other rooms. Even though this does have some disadvantages, it's a good programming challenge and it does open some interesting possibilities up. For example, you could create objects, people, animals and so on, capable of moving from room to room as the game progresses. They would have a degree of autonomy. For example, you might have robots that wander around, moving from room to room, and they might even take or drop treasures along the way. And to move from one room to another, they would simply need to find an exit in the current room and go directly into the room object in that direction. They wouldn't need to refer to some external list of rooms. The rooms they're in provide direct links to other rooms. So in other words, your robots would be able to interact with the world of the game on their own, just like a mouse in a maze. They would move from one place to another without needing any knowledge of the entire layout, that is, the map of the maze or the game. Now, as I say, that's something I would only suggest if you're a fairly experienced programmer. For now, in this course, I'm going to stick to a much simpler way of world building. Just as I've explained in the last few lessons, I'll store rooms in collections such as arrays or dictionaries because it's, well, it's just easier to do. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe and click the bell to get notifications whenever I upload new lessons.